Okay, so with this video, I'm going to show you how to morph two celebrity faces together for the Famous Genes Project. Um, we're going to be using the mask tool, which is something I've shown all of you several times, but it's a pretty um, a wide array of things you can do with that tool. So this is just another way to use it. So I'm going to go to Bing. This is, by the way, this is the, the Famous Genes template that you want to open up, download from Google Classroom, and then open up in Photoshop. So we're all working with the same size. Um, I'm going to go to... Bing, and I'm going to search for a the first celebrity for the morph. We'll do Harry Styles. Um, obviously, all the pictures that come back, they're all different sizes, but you know you want to kind of go with large if you can. I always click on this filter over to the right, and I say image size large, so it gives me the larger images. Um, you know, you can pick a picture of his face sort of off to the side if you want, um, but that means that whatever picture you find for the female celebrity, you're going to have to have their face sort of turned to the side, too. So, for example, this image here, he's sort of facing a little bit off uh, center. So whoever you find for the female has got to be doing the same thing. Um, this one's pretty good. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, 854 by 1280 is a pretty good size. And he's looking off to the side, but his face is pretty straight on. Okay, copy image. So um, sometimes, depending on what browser you're using or what um, platform, either PC or Mac, you might not have the copy image right away as an option when you right-click on it. So it might say open image in new tab, I think. And then once that new tab opens, you'll be able to copy it from, from that picture. So I'm going to copy him. And then I'm going to go back to Photoshop, paste him. Okay, so he's pretty large for the template. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit with Command minus or Control minus on the PC side. Command T, Control T to scale. Now, in the new version of Photoshop, which you all hopefully have access to uh, through the school deal, um, you don't have to hold down Shift when you scale it to keep it in proportion. Um, that's not the case on the older version at school. Um, but in this new version, actually, if you hold down Shift, it does the opposite. So it, it gets it out of proportion. So just dragging it will give you a good proportionate a new size of that image and then if you want to be fancy you can also hold down the option key and it goes it scales out from the center so it's really up to you I want to just get it so it's like a head and shoulder shot okay and then hit return zoom in a little bit okay now I'm gonna go and find my female celebrity so I'm gonna go really random here and I'm gonna pick Harry's uh, sorry Betty White we all know Betty White. So she, the picture I find of her, obviously I want her facing straight ahead too. Her eyes can be looking wherever they, wherever they you know, wherever they are, but you want her face straight, straight on because that was what his picture looked like. So this is probably not a good choice because she's kind of uh, turned to the side. Same thing, uh, image size, sort by large. Um, and let's just go with this one. This ought to be good. Okay. It's going to be good. Copy image. Back to Photoshop. Command V. Okay. Now this is this is um, the technique I would suggest. So you can move her around and try to line up her face with his. It's going to be really hard though, um, getting those features to line up. Just leaving it uh, as a normal layer. So above the layer where it says normal, I'm going to change that to multiply. So multiply is just a, a, another what's called the layer blend mode. So it's just changing the way that the current layer looks blended with the one below it. Um, so we've, I showed this to you previously in another demo, but this allows you to kind of really, you know, if you need to command T and like rotate it a little bit, or maybe you need to stretch it a little bit, you can hold down, you know, whatever you need to line it up. Don't feel like you have to get every single feature lined up. Um, it's already starting to look weird, but but in a, in a good way. Okay, I'm holding down shift just to kind of trim in the, the sides a little bit, keep it out of proportion in this case. Normally I would say always keep your shift, always make sure it's scaling proportionally, but for this project you can do a little tweaking. It'll be good. Okay, and then once you get it sort of in place, you can hit return. If you have messed up, you feel, and you want to start over, you can always hit escape and do the command T thing again. And now I'm going to hit return. So this is the crucial step. Don't leave it on multiply. That was only for the whole lining up thing. So we're going to go back to normal. Um, there's Betty White, and her face is now pretty well lined up with Harry Styles, at least, you know, for purposes of this video. All right. So this is where the mask comes in. 
I'm going to say layer, layer mask, sorry, hide all. Okay, so Betty White is gone. She was not deleted. She's just being hidden by a mask. So when we did the Star Wars thing, you remember we used the gradient tool. Um, you know, and this kind of makes it look sort of frightening, <laughs> but not exactly what we want. So I'm just going to go back a couple steps here. So that black mask, it's to reveal Betty White or whatever parts you want to reveal of Betty White, it's a matter of adding white to that mask. So hopefully you get that by now, that black mask is like a stencil. You haven't cut anything out of yet. So there's a lot of ways to add white. We have previously done it with a gradient tool, um, but I'm going to actually use the brush tool. Okay, so you can hit B on your keyboard. The brush tool acts a lot like the clone stamp tool in the sense that you can control the size of it and the hardness. Um, it, just by right clicking on it. So just to back up a little bit with the brush tool active um, and you put it, if you put it in your document, you can just right click on it and you'll have um, options for changing the size and the hardness. So hardness is probably for this project, something we want to keep really low because we want it to be kind of a soft edged brush. So um, I would drag it all the, all the way down to zero or close to that just because you want a nice soft brush size wise it kind of depends on what you're what area you're working on but i would say you know i don't know somewhere like around 40 it's probably good to start with at least somewhere there um and then hit return all right i'm going to zoom in a little bit now right now if we paint you'll see my colors at the bottom are black on top and white on bottom that means that if i go to paint it's just going to be adding black nothing's happening so i'm clicking but nothing's happening because all we're doing is adding black to a mask that's already black. So if you either hit uh, X on your keyboard or click on that little curvy arrow thing, you can switch your colors. Now watch what happens. All right, coolest thing ever. Um, so you can add Betty White's eyes and you can add her lips um, really just selectively showing parts of Betty White. So if I now take Harry Styles away, that's what it looks like. I'm only revealing a little bit, and you can even see on the little tiny mask thumbnail that there's just little splotches of white where her eyes and her lips are. Now, the other cool thing about this is as long as you're on the mask, so you can see that little white outline around the mask, as long as you're on that, right, see the little white outline, you can hit X on your keyboard and switch it back to black, and cover up stuff again. So it's not really the same as an eraser. It's just selectively showing or hiding parts as you go along. So you could have one Betty White eye and one Harry Styles eye, which would be weird. Um, and then if, say, if you wanted to do uh, reveal Betty White's nose, I'm gonna hit X or that little curvy arrow and I can paint the nose. Now I'm going to go over in the next video how to do like color adjustments because Betty White's really got a lot of makeup on and also the lighting of whatever that photo shoot is different from the one from Harry Styles. So one goal of this project for you should be to not only reveal the, the features of one celebrity on top of another celebrity's face and make it look believable, but also to blend the colors well so it doesn't look really patchy. Right now, it's totally different colors, so I'll go over that in a future video. But this is how you do it. Um, you probably want to keep the face that you're showing the least of on the top, and the one that you're retaining, like the background and most other features, should be on the bottom. Um, cool. So we're going to do three of these, uh, these morphs in this project, and you'll get better as you go. Uh, sometimes you get really lucky, but that's pretty much the, um, the video.